power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. But as see, you have to receive Jesus Christ to have the power to become a son. You cannot reject him. You cannot reject what the Bible says about him. You cannot reject his Holy Spirit and expect to see, become a son. That is your badge of honor. Your badge of honor is the fact that you believe and you receive. People are trying to receive him without believing him. It doesn't work that way. So when a non-believer is trying to explain to you, that's like a person trying to tell you who your natural and father and mother is. They wasn't there when you was born. They haven't been there your whole life. How are you going to tell me who my parents are and who they're not? Same thing. How is somebody going to tell you who your God is and who he's not and they don't even believe him? They're condemned and they're blind. But as many as received him, to them gave he power. So you receive power after you receive him. Without receiving him, you can't receive the power to understand and know him. That's like somebody wanting to learn how to speak a, a, a language without studying or being born or being taught. There's no way. You can't do it. You're not going to just wake up one day and say, I want to speak Chinese. It don't work that way. You have to be taught or born into a family where there's been a language spoken all your life. People act like their faith is going to be any different, so a non-believer is going to tell me that God is not real without even knowing him or receiving him. The Bible says, oh, taste and see. Without tasting something, without putting the, the actual food, no matter regardless of how it looks on a spoon or a fork, without putting it on your tongue, you can't taste it. And that taste, will, 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 however the taste buds work and go to the brain and whatever the case may go be, that taste will tell you if it's hot, cold, spicy or whatever. And then you will proceed to either swallow it and allow it to go into your stomach. So in other words, you can't taste uh, the word of the living God without seeing what it is all about. People reject him and want to say who he is. So the Bible lets us know we have the power to become. This is, uh, to me, that's the first step. He said, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become. That, when you receive him, like they said he was Joseph's son, so they're already rejecting who he was, is. That, isn't that Joseph's son? So they don't have no power. They're, 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 they've already rejected the power to become what they need to become to understand who he was, is, and is to come. The very second... They, they, they tried to say it was Joseph's son instead of what the people said who he was by being birthed with the Holy Spirit. They rejected him. And that rejected rejection caused them to be blind to the revelation knowledge that was available for them to know who he was and is. Cut him off. Yeah, they saw the miracles. They tried to deny those. They tried to say those, those didn't happen. They, they questioned the people that the miracles was done like the man who was blind from birth. They tried to fight against that, but they couldn't. So it gives us, who believe, the power to become sons of God. People wonder how we walk, excuse me, and operate and do the things that God has called and created us to do. That's because the Bible says that we receive him, we get power to become sons. Generically speaking, sons and daughters. Women become daughters. In other words, I believe God. Therefore, I have access to the kingdom of God. Now, not only can I see, I have access. I can enter in. There's a, a realm of, of, of things that happen spiritually that are made manifest natural. I heard it preached and taught and I studied myself that we are spiritual beings having a natural experience because this natural life is temporary and our spirit, our soul will go on to be judged and live eternally in damnation or in heaven. So we are spiritual beings being spoke of from a spiritual God living a natural experience, not natural people having a spiritual existence. Because you have more people walking by their flesh than by the power of the Spirit. Revelations 2 7 says, He that hath an ear to hear, what the Spirit saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. He that hath an ear to hear, when the word of the living God is spoken, some people hear it, some people don't. There was Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees who came to hear Jesus preach. And they called him a blasphemer. Did you hear what he said? He said he is equal with God. 
they had they had problems with what Jesus was saying because they could not see. Their non-belief condemned them and made them blind. They were so fixated on the kingdom that they had set up, and we have to be mindful of this because we all fall into the same traps at times. If I save this amount of money and I do this uh, X, Y, and Z, this has to happen. That's not true. Anybody who knows anything that knows that when we do stuff in and of, in this world, anything can go wrong. Anything could fail. Health could fail. And that's something else we need to understand as mature believers that it's not that we're not going to, the Bible says it rains on just as well as the unjust. We're going to go through things in this lifetime. Our bodies, you know, because we're stuck in the same physical uh, world that non-believers are stuck into. So we're going to experience a lot of the same things. The difference is we have a peace that surpasses all understanding because we know of the accomplished works of Jesus Christ. We are healed by his stripes. And, and finally, ultimately, even if we was to die, this body was to die, we have a home not made with hands. We are not going to be in eternal damnation. So we are healed past tense from even death. Death has no sting. Grave has no victory. So we don't live in the same world. And, and I already shared this. I'm going to reiterate it again. Psalm 34, 8 says, Oh, taste and see. I love that. Oh, taste and see. So when you taste, you will see. You can see. Until you taste, you can't see. I ask people, have you tried Jesus? And, nah, I'm not into all that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, I don't believe in that. And, you, know, I don't, you know, well, then you'll never see. You can't see unless you taste it. And then once you taste it, you cannot deny what you have seen. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. He's telling you you're blessed because you trust in him. Genesis 3, 5. For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. And you shall be as God's, little g, knowing good and evil. This is why believers, non-believers, excuse me, cannot see. For God doeth know that in the day that you eat thereof. In other words, when you sin, when you disobey, when you disobey Adam and Eve, when you disobey, See, God, as we know in the Bible, lets us know that God formed Adam from the dust of the earth. Formed him. Adam was a form. Until God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and made him a living soul. It was then that all humanity inherit, inherited the measure of faith. Through that breathing through the nostrils of a, a, a being that was created in the image of God, we all inherited an opportunity in the DNA of the measure of faith. So we all have a measure. And the way we feed that faith is with the word of the living God. And the word of the living God will allow us to see the other kingdom because that's a process of being born again. And it's sad, I hate to say it, but it's sad, and I hear the Holy Spirit prompted me to say it, is that people equiv equivalent, 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 make it equal, going to a building, being faithful to a building or denomination or a system to salvation. And the reason why this ain't the case is because the thief on the cross, two malefactors, one believed and one didn't believe. And the one that believed was able to see who Jesus Christ was and is. And that the works that he was accomplishing on the cross would give him a, 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 another life, another eternal life. But the non-believer said, if you're Jesus, Save yourself and save us. And that's the natural, that's, that's the mindset of, the, of, the, of the, the sinful man. They just want to be saved from this temporary existence so they can go on to sin again. Genesis 3, 5 again, and we're going to end on this. For God doeth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as God's little knowing good and evil. One thing I love about reading about Adam and Eve and their experience in the garden is that God had set up everything already set up for them. It was, it was, it was, everything they needed was there. Like when we all get to heaven. There's not going to be no need for medication, exercising, 
food, natural food. There's not going to be a need for those type of things. Because we know, as we have said before, that God is a spirit. And I would like to say that we that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. We want to continue on with this study into our midweek miracle this week, which is live and it will also be recorded here and, and uploaded to our channel. And I don't want to give way too much. I want you to be able to, to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church so you can glean from it. This, this is a word, these are words that was given to me during our first fruits fast. What that means is that I was fasting and praying the entire month, 31 days, seeking God's face concerning what He wanted me to say and share. And this was one of them. It's important that we see the kingdom of God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. For what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, we thank you first and foremost for you, Lord Jesus. The sacrifice that you made that we can become sons. We are no longer servants, but we're sons because a servant don't know the will and the purpose and the reason. But Father God, you have revealed to your sons your, your will, the things that you want done, the things that will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We thank you and praise you, Father God, for your anointing, your power, and your presence, everything you've done and doing. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory, Lord Jesus. We are nothing and can do nothing without you. Continue to allow this platform to be used to glorify you, Father God, to give you, Father God, all the honor that you are due, all the praise that you are due, all the glory that you are due, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Continue to use me, lead me, guide me, direct me, everything I do want to say. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you ever need to get in contact with our ministry, feel free to call us at 614-847-2057 or 614-723-9770 or by way of at the internet, internet at www.teamjesususa.com and we'll be more than happy to get back in contact with you and help you. Trace your start. God bless you and may heavens continually smile upon you. What up?